They don't want that free blues. Yo, welcome back to Free Blues Boxing. Hit the like, subscribe, and the notification bell for another new content. We are bike. Yo, what is good? World of Boxing, Happy New Year. Breaking news, is looking like Ryan Garcia wants revenge this April. Super excited. You know, one of the most exciting young fighters in the sport today. He's got power, he's got speed, he's big on social media. But as a boxing fan in the boxing world, we've been demanding, we've been hungry to see Ryan Garcia finally step back in the ring. I'm going to be honest, until proven otherwise, Ryan Garcia is looking like he's going to fight nobodies. We don't know these guys. Their, name, their names are Mercito Gesta and Sol Rodriguez. They're talking about can be happening next in April. There's a reason why they call Ryan Garcia one of the kings along with Javante Tank Davis. It was Teofimo Lopez before the loss to Cambosis. And then uh, obviously Javante Tank Davis. Ryan Garcia gets a lot of hate in the media. And I really don't like it. I mean, you know, he obviously had the mental issues, he said. And then um, right before he was going to fight Jojo Diaz, that should have happened, uh, he ended up breaking his hand. But like I said, from a boxing fan's perspective, I want to see Ryan Garcia get back in the ring. I know his trainer, which is also Canelo's trainer, obviously, Eddie Reynoso, he has said that Ryan Garcia is wasting his time and wasting his talent. I do somewhat agree with that. Uh, many believe, including Jojo Diaz, uh, I've seen in an interview, they think Ryan Garcia has, has got to this status and made so much money where he's getting to the point where he doesn't need boxing. And it's up to Ryan Garcia. It's not knocking him. Uh, he's done a successful job with TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram in promoting the Ryan Garcia brand, doing body shot challenges and, you know, doing the speed hands, different things. So, And not only that, his endorsements. Uh, right, right after the uh, the KO win over Luke Campbell uh, last January, I mean he was making money before that. He obviously has a a million subscribers on YouTube. He's got I don't know somewhere at least five to ten million followers on Instagram. But the endorsements are nuts. Uh, he's obviously signed to Gatorade. Uh, I seen on his Instagram he's got uh, alcohol endorsements and a few different things. For Ryan Garcia to not be a champion, he obviously was Devin Haney's mandatory for that WBC belt. He fought Luke Campbell for that WBC mandatory belt and chose not to fight Devin Haney due to the mental health issues. Obviously wanted to fight Manny Pacquiao at one point. He built that up. He wanted to fight Javante Tank Davis at one point. And then fast forward to now, after the broken hand, after Devin Haney's fought Jojo Diaz, a whole almost two years later since he's been in the ring, uh, there were talks with him and Isak Cruz, uh, a tough, tough fighter that just fought Javante Tank Davis and went the distance. Many thought uh, him versus Isak Cruz versus Ryan Garcia is a fight that the boxing world needs to see. But honestly, in my opinion, I thought, I think Javante Tank Davis, if he didn't break his hand, which Tank, I respect Tank so much because he never complained about it. Tank never broke his hand. Isak Cruz would have gotten knocked out, in my opinion. No knock against Cruz, but let's be honest. Tank beat him 8-4 to four or 7-5. to five. It was a close fight, but he beat him with one hand. Uh, Tank, obviously, he didn't have his, he didn't have his, uh, was it his right hand or his left? But he was pulling the punches. He obviously, his hand was broke in the post-fight press conference. Uh, coach Calvin, Javante Tank Davis coach, he was like, look, you guys need to, he was telling the media, he was like, y'all need to cut Tank Davis some slack. This man, this man hurt, he hurt his hand in camp and never complained once. Coach Calvin was like, he told me around the sixth round, he was like, my hand hurt. And Coach Calvin told him like, man, you better, you better suck it up. You better fight and get the job done. Clearly, as far as background, as far as the mentality, Javante Tank Davis and, and Ryan Garcia aren't very similar. And just the way that they got their fame, I'll be honest, Floyd, Floyd Mayweather was right. Ryan Garcia got his fame from, you know, from the internet and marking himself in the YouTube, Javante Tank Davis got his fame from kicking you know what. So that's just plain obvious. But Ryan Garcia versus Tank Davis, I think is, has the potential to be a massive fight down the line. They obviously don't want them to fight now. Why now when they could 
make millions and millions more fighting later down the line. I think Tank's going to continue to do what he's been doing, which is knocking guys out in spectacular fashion. I think Ryan Garcia will always be relevant whether he keeps boxing or not. Many people think regarding these young fighters, not only just Ryan, but Gervonta Tank Davis, that, you know, they're keeping them protected. Um, I don't agree with that all the way because I think the business model is these fighters got to be built up and then down the line, they will fight. I mean, look at the way Floyd's career was built. He wasn't fighting nobody until probably Arturo Gatti. Uh, longevity in, in the sport of boxing matters. But from the sound of it, it's looking like the younger generation, including Tank Davis, you know, it came out of his mouth that these guys want to stop boxing around 30. You know, it kind of reminds me of Keith Thurman, which I articulated in the last video. Um, the things Ryan Garcia is going through now, Keith Thurman is going through the same thing, but the difference is the age gap. Keith Thurman is 33 years old. Ryan Garcia is 23, a whole decade apart, and they're both losing interest in the sport of boxing. If Ryan Garcia continues boxing, he has plenty of boxing left in him. He hasn't really took any punishment at all. I mean, he has only one knockdown. It was a flash knockdown, which I, which I think has been scaring him a little bit to get back into the ring, which is understandable. Boxing is not easy, but we got to say he's not cut from the same cloth as a Devin Haney or Javante Tank Davis, where many fighters, pretty much all fighters, there's, there's, there's no fighter in today's game, I think, at least as big as Ryan, that just quit boxing because of mental health. But it's looking like Ryan Garcia will be back. Like I said, I'm a fan of how he fights. The dude is quick. He's explosive. I think he has one of the best left-hand counter punches in the game as young as, he, as young as he is at 23 years old. And just the mega fights, Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney is huge. Ryan Garcia versus Javante Tank Davis is huge. Ryan Garcia versus Lomachenko is huge. Uh, Ryan Garcia versus Teofimo Lopez is huge. So there's plenty of opportunity uh, you know, out there for him. And you know, only time will tell. I think regarding his career, I think the tune-ups are fine. Like I said, he isn't fighting anybody. You know, these, these dudes, they might be ranked in the top 10, but we don't know these dudes, like I said, until, pro uh, until I'm proven wrong. I think it was an excellent choice for Ryan Garcia to team up with, with, with uh, Team Canelo. They're obviously doing a good job with him on his power punches and boxing ring IQ. Canelo is pound for pound number one. So it's only pros to that Ryan Garcia can get out of that. So, yeah, we'll see for sure. Um, put in the comment section who you think will be at the top of the lightweight division and who are your favorite fighters right now. They don't want that free blues. Yo, thank you so much for watching Free Blues Boxing. Hit the like, subscribe, and the notification bell for limited boxing content. Until next time.